with the RV industry booming, especially here in the last couple of years, whether you're planning on RVing over the holidays for vacation and especially full-time RVing, you can't wing it anymore. You're going to have to have your plans. In this video, we're going to show you some of the tools that we use when we plan our trips, how we keep track of all of our reservations, and especially how we keep our family and friends up to date. Whoa, 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 whoa. Exactly which part of whose family? I'm not saying. <laughs> <laughs> campgrounds filling up fast these days and especially with us pulling a 43 foot toy hauler we can't expect just to go to a campground and they're gonna have sites available for us so we'd like to plan our trips well ahead of time it's nothing for us to have reservations six to even nine months out if you're going to go to a Yosemite or a Glacier or Yellowstone, you can't expect to make reservations for next week you're going to want to look nine to maybe even 12 months in advance now for the trip planning part of it, we use a product called Trip Wizard. We're not affiliated with them at all. It's just a tool that works best for us personally. Yeah, so we love the tool. It works, it works great for us. So we use Trip Wizard for planning our trips, and we, then we use Google Calendar to keep track of our, keep, basically keep track of our trips and our reservations. Now we like Google Calendar, one thing, it's free. Another thing we like about it is we can share it with our friends and family so they can kind of keep track of where we're at. And if they want to plan a trip to come see us, you know, if they know we're going to be in Yellowstone and they want to come see us, they can kind of plan ahead and, yeah. and make reservations that way. So now that you know a couple of the tools that we use, let's go into Trip Wizard. I'll start showing you some of the settings that we use, and then we'll do a simulated trip to kind of show you the process that we take when we set up one of our trips. Before I show you RV Trip Wizard, let's go to their website and I'll show you their login page just so you have an idea of what to expect. Now we're at rvtripwizard.com. You can see this is their main page or the home page. There's a little bit of information on this page as far as some of the features. Now, if you do not already have an account, you'd want to come up here to sign up or renew if you're going to renew. There's two options. There's a monthly option for $19.99 and also an annual option for $49 for the year. And of course, we do the annual option. So this is a very basic website. If you don't have an account, this is where you'd sign up. So now that we've kind of seen what their website looks like, let's go over to RV Trip Wizard. We'll start a demo trip and then we'll start out with some of the settings that we use on our trips. I logged into my account on Trip Wizard and what we're going to do is we're going to create a demo trip. We're going to first go through some of the settings and then we'll show you how we select and figure out where we want to go and what campgrounds we want to stay at. What we're going to do here is we're going to create a new trip. You can call it anything you want. We're just going to call this one demo. We don't know what day we're going to start yet, so we'll just leave this as no and hit create. Now, when you create a new trip, you can give it a starting location. You can use your, your current location or pick one or choose one from a map. So we're just going to pick one. I'm going to do, um, how about Las Vegas? Uh, how about this Las Vegas RV resort? So this is where we're going to start our trip from. Just again, it's just a demo trip. Everybody likes Las Vegas, so what a great place to start. Now when a trip comes up, these are some of the settings we're going to use for our trip. And we'll go through these tabs one at a time. The general tab, again, we just have a trip name, any trip notes, anything you want to put in here, maybe some phone numbers or some notes to yourself. The trip status, I'm going to leave this as a tentative trip. If this was done and finalized, I'd probably switch it over to an active trip. I don't need a pre-departure email and the units are okay. We're going to use Imperial units. This is a pretty important tab. This is the RV info tab and this is how Trip Wizard knows the proper way to route you. So in here you can see I put in a height of 13 feet 6 inches for our RV. Trip Wizard will use this information and hopefully guide us around any low bridges. So it knows if there's a bridge that can't handle a 13 foot 6 RV, it's going to pick a different route. Now, again, it's still up to me to verify that. I, I can't, I, I trust Trip Wizard, but again, it's my RV. I'm going to double check and, and make sure. We put in the length of our RV, the weight, and if we're carrying propane. And again, Trip Wizard can use this when, when it's calculating your routes. 
it may uh, there may be some bridges that can't handle 20,000 pounds and there may be some locations that won't let you bring po uh, propane through on the right hand side we have our truck or fuel information personally we don't use this very much trip wizard can use this information for basically fuel budgeting and showing you maybe some uh, fuel stops it thinks you're gonna have to you know let you know when uh, you're getting low on fuel and things like that again we don't use this very often routing and driving tab this one here is I, I really really like there's some pretty good information on this one again on the left hand side as far as routing we try to avoid ferries again that is doesn't come into play for us too often hasn't yet I do like to avoid tunnels if I can if a tunnel will allow my RV to go through it I'm just kind of a little scared <laughs> so we try to avoid tunnels whenever we can on the right hand side we have driving time estimates again RV trip wizard will use this to you know tell you it's going to take X number of hours and minutes to get from point A to point B. We use 55 miles an hour as an average. We do drive a little bit faster than that. We're probably usually around 60, but I just use 55. It gives me a little bit of buffer zone for, for time. Now the driving radius, this is really, really nice. And this, we use this all the time on all of our maps. And basically what this is, is we don't like to drive more than 300 miles a day if, if we can help it. Sometimes we do have to go over. But we try not to drive more than 300 miles a day. You can see that we have three rings. We have a minimum ring, middle ring, and a max max distance. The max distance we have set up for 300 miles, and the minimum distance is 200 miles. So when we're at a campground or at a location and it's centered on our map, that location will have these three rings around it. When we go to pick our next stop or our next destination, we can use these rings as a reference. So I know. If I want to drive roughly 300 miles today, I can pick a, a location or my next stop roughly on the outside edge or the outer ring. So these really, really come in handy. Expenses, the expenses tab. Again, we really don't use this that often. I don't. We don't use Trip Wizard for budgeting or anything like that. We strictly use it for planning our trips. So now that we have all this set up, we have our trip settings the way we want it. We're going to save our trip settings. If you remembered, we, we told Trip Wizard we're going to start in Las Vegas. So Las Vegas is here centered in our, in our map. A few things just to notice right off the bat on the far right hand side is this research tab. And this is, this is what you can use for filtering. We're on the parks tab. If you look up in the top left, this is how we can filter out what parks get displayed, which ones are hidden on the map. There's a lot of filters you can use. We only use three filters. We use the filters that we must have. We have a pet, so we need a pet friendly park. We have a large RV, so we need big rig access. And we like full hookup. So those are our three filters. You can filter on ratings. You can filter on if the park has a pool or not, or a hot tub, all the amenities, all that kind of stuff. Personally, I don't like to filter on any of that because I would much rather see the park show up on the map as long as it meets my bare minimums and then I can pick and choose if I want to save that park or not. So you can see here we have our three filters are pets, big rig access, and full hookups. And you can open these up. You can see here's park features. We can go down and here's two of our, our filters right here, pets allowed and big rig access. So that's how you would select that. Points of interest. Again, this is, uh, if you have a GPS in your car, this is kind of the same concept. If I wanted to look for fuel stops or rest stops or maybe an overnight parking, I can select these from the, the POI or points of interest and they'll show up on the map. So where this comes in handy, if we're going from point A to point B, it's an all day trip, we know we're going to want to rest somewhere in there and I may want to get fuel. So this helps me plan for fuel. I, I might be able to see, oh yeah, there's a, a fuel stop roughly 150, 200 miles into our day. That might be a great place. We'll go ahead and fuel up, make a rest stop out of it as well, and then continue on. So points of interest really come in handy. Hazards, ha the only thing on hazards is low clearance. Again, I like to see this. It's just a kind of a double check um, scenario. So these are kind of basically map settings or RV park settings, filters. That's how it gets set over here. On the left hand side, 
This is when we start building up our stops, they're gonna start displaying on the left-hand side one stop after another. And I'll show you that in just a minute, but as you can see right now, we just have our starting place, which is um, Las Vegas. Again, right here, this is the, the tools. You can go in here if you needed to. These, um, this is the trip settings. This is what we did a little bit earlier. You can send some of this information to a GPS. You can send it to a calendar. There's a lot of information you can get from here. We're not gonna do this yet, but at the end, I'll show you how to import it into a calendar. So now that kind of covers some of the basics of RV Trip Wizard. What we'll do now is we're going to pick some spots. We're going to show you how we would pick and choose which campgrounds that we would stay at. And we'll go from there. We'll just pick um, some sample places and make a fun trip out of this. The trip we're going to work on is going to be a little short trip. We're going to go from Las Vegas, Nevada to Denver, Colorado with a few stops in between. Realistically, what we like to do, we like to plan a whole year ahead of time. We like to get back to family, usually in Florida for Christmas and over the holidays. So we'll plan for the whole year, we'll plan an ideal trip. If we're gonna do, let's say we're gonna go up the East Coast, we'll make all our stops. We wanna stay at least two weeks in each of these stops. And then we'll try to start to work our way back and get back to Florida for Christmas. If that works out, great. Usually it doesn't. So usually what happens is we realize we're not gonna get back to Florida until after Christmas. So our next step would be to either cut out some of the stops or shorten some of the stops. Now again, we'd like to stay at least two weeks in each location. We don't like to move around too, too much. But if we had to, we could you know, do a week at a couple spots if that you know, got us back to Florida in time. Again, if that didn't work, then we'd have to cut out some of the spots. So that's that's how we would normally do it. We would try to map out a whole year. Once we get that finalized, once we get, you know, stops out, we, we need to get rid of or shorten the stops. Then we can start making some of the reservations. Now we won't reserve spots for the whole year. We'll do the first few months. And then as the year goes on, we'll just continue on making reservations. But let's go ahead and get started on this trip. Here we're starting at Las Vegas, and again, what we want to do is we want to get to Denver, Colorado. Now, I do want to make a couple stops before I go to Denver. There's Zion. I, don't, I want to go see Zion. So what we would do, you can see we have Las Vegas centered. I'm going to kind of zoom in a little bit. Zion is roughly in, in this area right here where I'm circling my mouse. I can click to show my campgrounds or RV sites and again these are using filters so we remember we had three filters we had big rig access pets allowed and we want full hookups so these are the sites or the locations that meet that criteria now I can just zoom in a little bit start to see some more sites you can see Zion is right here where I'm circling my mouse and now again for us I work full time during the week, so I have to have good cell coverage. So that's the number one priority for us. So that does limit us. It may not limit you, but we're limited. Um, some people would probably love to go right into Zion and get a campground in Zion. I don't think that's realistic for us just because of cell coverage. So usually what I do is I try to get as close to a Zion or a place I want to go to that still has great cell coverage. And usually that means you're in a town or a city. Again, here's, here's Zion National Park. Springdale, I would probably rule these out. They're a lot closer uh, to the entrance, but I just, I don't trust the cell coverage. So we're gonna come over here and look around. Here's a, here's a good SAM location. And right off the bat, uh, this is just a, one I just happened to pull up, Willow Wind RV Park. First thing I look at is how many reviews there are. In this case, there's 239 reviews, and it has pretty good reviews, 8.7 8 out of 10. You gotta kinda watch some of these. Some people like to filter on just reviews, and the reason why I don't like that is you could have a site with one review, and somebody gives it a one, or they, they may have given it a five, and it's really not realistic. I like, to me personally, the more reviews there are, I think the more realistic the reviews are. So this looks pretty good. Here's an 8.7 out of 10 with 239 reviews. Let's just look around some more. 
This one here only has 17 reviews, still not, not too bad. We can go up here, 8.4. Again, this only has 10 reviews. So that, that scares me just a little bit. We'll just look at one more. Um, 23 reviews and an 8 out of 10. So not bad, but out of all these, this would, off the bat, would be my first choice. So this would be the one I would want to start with. Right off the bat from here, you can see, again, the number of reviews. You can see um, the review status. This is how many miles from our previous location. In this case, this would be Las Vegas. The price, it looks like pricing's about average. And then here's some of the amenities they have. What we can do is we can click on park details. And this is a really, really helpful. The very first thing I do when I get to park details is I'll look through some of these pictures. I'm just gonna scroll through some pictures and this will give you a really good idea on what the park looks like. Some of these, they sound great. You know, the websites make them look awesome. But when you look at some of the pictures, uh, you know, you may change your mind. Going through here, actually looks like a pretty decent um, pretty decent spot I can come over here to features click on the features tab again my number one priority is cell coverage first thing I look at we have AT&T we have Sprint uh, Wi-Fi don't worry too much about Wi-Fi Verizon and T-Mobile this looks good this looks promising next thing we do is we look at reviews Again, we already knew there's 239 reviews, but what this does is it kind of gives us a ballpark figure on pricing before we go to their website. We can see somebody paid $60 a night, another one $50 a night, another one $63 a night. So we can kind of see an average of this is probably somewhere in the high 50s or low 60s. Then what we would do is go to tips and or questions and answers. And some of these are, are kind of basic. You may get a lot of tips that people say, go try out this restaurant or make sure you go, you know, go here and do this. So, but it is very helpful. Weather, I'm not too worried about weather. I can look this up anytime. We already know, you know, what the weather's gonna be that time of year. So this looks, this looks very promising. Now what we would do, I wouldn't, we can go to the website. We can go look at their website and get some more information. At this point, again, this is just a demo. So I'm not gonna dig too deep, too deep into their website, but I do like to go to their website and just get a basic understanding of how everything looks. The site does look promising. So tentatively, we're gonna go ahead and stay at this site. We're gonna, this is a pick that we would do. We're gonna add this to our trip. We're gonna stay here for 14 nights. And we're gonna add this after our last stop. Now we only have one stop right now, which is our starting place, which is Las Vegas. So this will get added after Las Vegas and we'll just add to our trip. Now I can zoom out a little bit. I'm gonna get rid of all these other, just so you can see, and just show you what this really did. So now that we have, this is Las Vegas, and this is our new site. You can see, again, over on the left-hand side, Las Vegas is where we started from. And here's some little bit more information. It makes it real easy when you're trying to keep track of things. Tentatively, we want to stay at Wild Willow Wind RV Park. It is 143 miles from Las Vegas. And it should take us approximately two and a half hours to get there. And again, that's based on some of those settings that we set up earlier and we're gonna stay for 14 nights. Again, costs, I don't, I don't pay any attention to costs. I'm not, not too worried about that. Again, we haven't booked anything. This is just a tentative stop for us. Next thing we wanna do is, after we go to Zion, I think we wanna to go to Moab. We, uh, there's Arches and Canyonlands. I think we wanna go there for a couple weeks and check that out. That is over in this general location over here. You can see here's Canyonlands and here's Arches. And again, we're well within our 300 miles as the crow flies. I think you'll probably see this could actually get a little bit more than 300 miles just based on the way the road is. So now we know we want to go to some place around Arches or Canyonlands, so we'll zoom in. I would love to stay real close to Arches if I can, so we're going to start looking at some some locations. I'm going to zoom in some more. 
This is the town of Moab, so more than likely any of these in here would work as far as cell coverage, I, I would think. But let's just go ahead and start, um, start right here at the top. Closest one. This is 7.6 out of 10, 124 reviews. Not too bad. Let's just continue looking. 5.3 out of 10. I probably would just bypass this one and it only has 68 reviews. This one looks pretty good. Here's 8.4 out of 10 and 340 reviews. That looks like it this could be promising. It looks like it could be a little expensive, but we'll keep this one in mind. Portal RV Resort and Campground. And we'll go down here, 6.2 out of 10, 33 reviews, I probably wouldn't do that. 7.9 out of 10, 92 reviews, not too bad. So this would probably be my second choice right now. We can look some more. Here's another good one, 8.1 out of 10, 227 reviews. I would prefer to say closer to Arctis if I can. I believe it was this one. So this is my first choice for this location. Again, we can see in this particular case, it's going to be 326 miles from our previous location. So this is going to be a full day. We, again, we try not to go over 300 miles if we can help it. This one's close enough that I would, you know, 26 miles isn't going to kill me, but I, I prefer not to if I can help it. Next thing we would do is we would look at park details. Again, I like to go through some of these pictures just to get an idea of what the park looks like. You can't always trust the websites. They always make things look perfect. So far, this, this park looks pretty decent. So we'll go over and look at features. Again, my number one priority, I have to look at connectivity. So we have ATT, Sprint, Verizon, and T-Mobile. Again, Wi-Fi, I don't, I don't worry about that. So this all looks pretty good. We can look at some of the reviews. This is a pretty expensive park. It looks like probably about an $80 a night park. Now what I would do at this point is I would probably read some of these reviews. Sometimes you can get a pretty good or general idea about the park. If you get multiple reviews saying that spots are tight but we love, this, we love the park or the people running the park are awesome but they cut the grass at 2 o'clock in the morning. If you get multiple comments like that, the more likely they're correct. It's just something to be aware of. So I would go through some of these comments just to see what's going on with the park. Tips, I would look at tips again. Again, usually tips are more like good restaurants to eat or where's a good gas station and things like that. This park looks very promising. I don't see anything wrong with it. So I think what we'll do is let's go ahead and tentatively add this to our trip. We'll add to our trip up here. Again, I want to stay here for 14 nights. We're going to add this after our last stop, which is right here, and just hit add to our trip. Now again, just to show you what's, what's going on, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Now you can see we're, we're starting to build up our trip. You can see we started in Las Vegas, we were going to Zion, and now we're going to Arches. On the left hand side, again, you can see Las Vegas where we started. We're going to drive 143 miles to get to Willow Wind RV Park. That should take us about two and a half hours. Then from there, and we're going to stay there for 14 nights. From there, we're going to drive 327 miles to this Portal RV Resort. It should take us almost six hours. I think there's probably some, probably going through some mountains and all this. This is going to be a, a very full day for us. So we're definitely going to want to get a good start here. But you can start to see how this trip is starting to build on itself. If you had to, you can rearrange these stops. But we don't, we don't need to do that. So from here, we're just going to do one more stop. I think we want to end up in Denver, Colorado. So what we would do is we're going to zoom in on Denver. Once we get close in here, we'll go ahead and turn on our, our parks. And well, here's a good spot down here. How about Colorado Springs? We've, we've been there, so let's, let's check out Colorado Springs. Here's one here. This is a foot of the Rockies, 6.7 out of 10, 72 reviews. Um, doesn't really sound great. Let's look at some other ones around here. 5.1 out of 10, I wouldn't even think about that. Here's another one. 
6.2 out of 10. Garden of the Gods RV Resort, 304 reviews. That's probably a possibility. However, we're starting to get away from town a little bit, so that does scare me some. So let's look around some more. Here's a KOA down here. This doesn't look too bad. We got 7 out of 10, almost 200 reviews. It's still close enough to where we want to go. So let's go ahead and check this one out. We're going to look at park details. Again, I always like to look at some of the pictures. It gives you a really good uh, view or idea of what the park really looks like. This one doesn't look too bad. Again, now we'll go over to features. First thing I look at, connectivity. Looks like we have all the major carriers covered. I'll look at reviews. It looks like it's going to be kind of expensive, you know, 70, 120, 68. So I'm guessing it's probably somewhere around $70 a night. Uh, it does have a good SAM, so you get 10% off. And some tips. We'll look at some of the tips. Um, nothing too special here. So again, this, this one looks promising. I think it's the place we could stay at. So we can go ahead and add this to our trip. Again, we'll stay here for 14 nights. And we'll add this after our last stop. Now what we can do is just click up here to show entire trip. I'm going to turn off these other locations. Oh, and now we see something. If you take a look at this one, notice our distance. Colorado Springs, it's 429 miles from our previous site. We can't, that's just way too much. I don't mind going over 300 miles a little bit. It's saying almost just shy of eight hours for the day. We just, we can't do that. So we really need to split this up probably into two days. We'll probably just stay somewhere for one night in between, maybe roughly in between. I do travel over the weekends, or we, you know, Dean and I travel over the weekends, so I could leave on a Saturday, spend Saturday night somewhere in the middle, and then continue on Sunday. So I think that's what we're going to need to do. Let's zoom in. And again, we're only going to stay for one night. It's it's more of a just a rest stop or an overnight stop. You could look for harvest hose. You could look for places to pull over if you wanted to, rest areas, truck stops, Walmarts, anything like that. There's not too many Walmarts out here in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so we're probably going to try to find a campground and just stay there for one night. And we want to, you know, try to get somewhere close to the middle if we can. So we're just going to start zooming in. This looks pretty nice here. There's this big lake, this big reservoir here. So this may not be too bad of a place to stay. Um, oh, here's Oasis RV Resort. Look at this, it's exactly 200 miles from our previous location, almost uh, right in the middle, so that's good. 6.8 out of 10, 41 reviews. Okay, here's another one, 6.8 out of 10. 59 reviews. So probably either one of these. We're not too too worried because we're only going to stay there for one night. We'll go ahead and click on the Passport America one because hopefully we can get a little bit cheaper cheaper rate. We'll click on Park Details. Again, I always do like to go through some of the pictures just to take a look. It looks okay. I mean again, it's just for one night. We'll look at the features. You can see here, again, we're out in the middle of nowhere, so they do have Wi-Fi, but there's really no cell coverage. Again, this would be like a Saturday night for us. We can deal with one night with no coverage. That's not a problem. We can go through some of the reviews. It looks like the prices here are about the mid-40s, so that's, that's pretty good. And any tips here. You can see they have Gunnison is oh, about 12 miles away. So it's like the closest town is about 12 miles away. So this might be one of those situations where we go to the the campground, set up our, our campsite. We may have to go into Gunnison to fill up some diesel fuel for the next day and come back. So these are some of the things you can find out looking through some of these tips. Again, I, I think this is fine. Again, it's only one night. So we're going to go ahead and add this to our trip. We're going to add one night. Instead of adding this after the last stop, we're going to add it after this guy, I think it was, and hit OK. 
So now we can show entire trip. Going to get rid of all the extra stuff. Now you can see we're going to go from Las Vegas, drive 143 miles to Willow Wind or uh, Zion. We'll stay there for 14 nights. Then we're going to go to Portal RV Resort. That's 327 miles. Again, we'll stay here for 14 nights. And that's in uh, Moab. That's around Arches National Park. Then we're going to, we're trying to get to Colorado, remember, but it's too far. So we're going to go to Oasis RV Resort, 229 miles. We're only going to stay there for one night. Then we're going to finish our trip up at Colorado Springs KOA. It's exactly 200 miles away, and we're going to stay there for 14 nights. So that's the basics of how we would create a tentative trip. Now that this trip is... I don't want to say done, but it's it's laid out, the dates work, the times work, the distances all work. Again, in reality, there'd be we might have 25 stops. Uh, again, we just have what five stops on this trip. But once we get all of our stops and dates and times the way we like it, the way it's going to work for us, now we can kind of go back and start making reservations for these uh, for these sites and that's probably what we would do next once we save it to our calendar we can start making reservations so now that we do have this trip finalized let me show you how we would add it to our calendar so before I add this to my calendar I really need to start putting some dates in here what we can do is we can come back up to our starting location Las Vegas we're gonna edit this and we're going to put in a start date. Let's go to uh, next year. Let's just start. How about April 1st? And we will hit save. Now what happens once we do that, if you look closely in here, we can see we're starting at April 1st. We're going to get to Willow Wind RV Park April 1st. Stay in there for 14 nights, which means we're going to get to our next stop April 15th. Stay in here for 14 nights, going to get to our next stop, April 29th, and so on. So that's really nice. And once these are done, you can actually lock these in place. So if you made other, uh, end up adding or inserting some stops or removing some stops, you can actually lock these in place so that your calendar or dates don't move. Now what we do is once we make a reservation, that's when we lock it in place. And that kind of shows us that yes, we have a reservation for this spot. So if I was to make a reservation at Oasis RV Resort, once that reservation is finalized, I would come back to here and, and lock this in place. And now I know I'm good to go. So now we have dates for this. What we can do is import this into our Google Calendar. We're going to choose Export to Calendar. We're going to copy this link. And then we'll go over to Google Calendar. Down the very bottom, it says other calendars. We're going to add to that. We're going to add from a URL. And now we're just going to paste that URL into here and click add calendar. Now you can see down here our, our calendar has been added. Now that we imported our Trip Wizard calendar into Google Calendars, you can see that all of our locations are marked on the calendar. If we wanted to, we can go in and edit it, add some notes to it. What we like to do is once we make a reservation, we lock that place down in Trip Wizard, but we also come into Google Calendar and put in all of our reservation information, phone numbers, addresses, prices, any information they send us via email or over a phone, we put down in here. One of the reasons is when you start doing 20, 30 of these in a row, you forget a lot of things. So we put all of our notes in one place and for that we use Google Calendar. So that's a very simple sample demo trip. Hopefully you got something out of it. There's a lot more to Trip Wizard. I would suggest if you do happen to use the product, just play with it a little bit. Do some sample trips like this one right here, and the more you use it, the more you'll understand. So hopefully you learned something. As important as this subject is, if you have any questions at all, something I didn't explain well, or something maybe you just didn't understand, please leave a comment below, and we'll try to answer it and help you out the best that we can. We knew that trip planning was going to be time consuming. However, we also knew that it was going to save us a lot of headaches and maybe an argument. Or two. 
We hope that you enjoyed today's video and found it helpful in some way. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click the like button. And remember, always live life to the fullest.